So, it kind of dawned on me with the last video that I didn't talk about two or three crucial factors, really, um, with regard to going karting on a super tight budget, right? So, I thought I'd go over them now, explain what I do, uh, what I used to do, and how you can do these things on a super, super tight budget. Uh, the warning is it may require some sort of self-sacrifice to a certain degree, and maybe some... Uh, willing family members that, that don't mind putting up with your eccentricities, I guess. So, first of all, transport in the car, right? Transport in the car is uh, an issue if you don't have access to, like, a big van or a big truck or something like that. Um, but first of all, the way I transport my car is with a small vo uh, Vauxhall Corsa combo van, right? Um, as you can see behind me, I've also got a roof rack on top. Um, so, technically, I could actually take two carts for this. But um, I understand that a lot of people won't have access to a van. Uh, they're not going to be able to afford to uh, buy a separate van. Um, so I'd like to say now that all you need really is bare minimum. I have seen someone turn up at PFI with a senior Rotax car on his own on top of a little mini. And I mean a proper mini, not your modern uh, rubbish. I mean the actual little diddy Italian job mini. And he had a Rotax on top of it. And he was having the time of his life right so first of all all you really need is a small car and a roof rack in fact i've seen people turn up at rye house and i think all they did was put carpet on top of their cars because there was a few of them and they sort of wrapped some strapping around the roof and i thought that that may be a bit that's 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 a bit too extreme for me because you know you might have a big emergency brake scenario and everything's going zonk. but uh yeah i mean all you need is a roof rack right and that can cost you maybe 50 or 60 quid if you're lucky and you can always sell it on ebay or whatever for the same price right i used to transport my car on the roof of my old golf um even when i was on my own because you, you need a hand to get it on top um but because i was racing an old sort of um an 89 cali I could actually do it all on my own. It was a bit tough, but um, I got a few dodgy looks. But it is possible, right? Um, even if we say, right, you can't afford a roof rack, but you have a small car, like a hatchback, you can fit it in the back. I, In 2014, when I raced uh, Oliver Scullion's F100 at Whittle Mill for the O-Plate, I fit my car and my engines and my tools and my spares all in the back of a Mark IV Golf. And... I had a passenger with me in the car as well, right? So it was a tight squeeze, but uh, you'll see it on now on the screen, the actual, when I, I put it all in the back of the car, that it is definitely 100% possible, right? Uh, to do and transport a car that way. If you don't have access to a car um, that you use anyway, because I know, you know, having a car isn't cheap necessarily. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to make this as cheap as conceivably possible. And that's that if you already have a car, it's like, the money's already spent but if you don't you alternatively may be able to hire a small van um again that's a cost that that disappears once you spend or you can maybe have a friend who's got a van or or, or something that, that can transport the car um if you've got a very good friend and you can pay them by either paying them or you can let them have a go in your car that kind of thing i think that's kind of, kind of a cool way to get people more interested as well is like you know, if you have friends that might be able to help, you know, offer them a chance to drive the car and maybe they buy a car, maybe they get involved and you can collaborate that way and cut your costs by sharing a van, sharing rental, that kind of thing. It's like there are ways to do it um, and help other people as well. Um, if you are really struggling and you, and you don't have access to a car, um, you can always uh, store a car at a circuit or with a team. Uh, unfortunately, this does come with a cost. Um, you know, sometimes places at circuits have storage facilities and it can be anything from 50 to £200 a month. It really it, it depends what the circuit costs are and, and that kind of thing. But it is possible. But that is kind of, at this point, um, I'd like to say that I'm talking about doing carton on a lower income and, you know, there are certain aspects you just can't escape. If you want to transport the cart, and, and not spend money you just got to hope that you already have a vehicle that you can just stick a roof rack on right if you see you go to the circuit sometimes and you see big trucks and big vans and all that seriously you don't need it right you can fit almost everything you can possibly need into the back of a hatchback and if you've got a roof rack i mean it's happy days mate um in terms of store i mean i as i says i'm lucky because i have a van already um you know so you know 
but it is possible with, with a small hatchback. I've done it, that's what I used to do. In terms of storage, I'm lucky again that I have a garage, right? So I don't have another added complexity and added cost um, after I've bought the cart, right? So what I used to do when I didn't have a garage, uh, it used to be in the shed. Um, it, the, these things aren't ideal, but we're talking about trying to keep the budget low, right? We're trying to keep, we're trying to encourage the sort of lower income car, right? But you can keep it in a shed. I prefer to keep the engines indoors. So even now my engine's actually staying in, in my bedroom, uh, partly for security reasons. And secondly, I think um, the conditions are better in my bedroom than a garage. I don't want moisture and, and rust getting in there. I'm not too fussed about the cart. Um, again, it's not ideal, but um, I, I'm more precious about the engines, okay? So you can have your engines indoor. And I, I used to actually, if you haven't got access to a garage or a shed, I did actually keep my car once upon a time in my bedroom. Luckily, I was uh, ground floor, so so I, I could sort of just take it in and out very easily. You have to have very um, accepting family or, or um, housemates or a relationship that you're in. Um, it's not going to be for everybody because, you know, who wants to live in a house with a car, an oily car, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I always made sure that it was very clean before I bought it in. Um, not perfect, not ideal, but the point here is to say that even in a scenario where you don't think it's possible, it might be possible, right? You might just be able to own a car. Again, you, you have to make some sacrifices, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of people that I've worked with have made incredible sacrifices to go karting because they really love it, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about trying to be realistic, you know? So you will make sacrifices. If you're on a low income, you're not gonna be able to go out every weekend and, and have a few pints with a few mates and because the, the costs escalate, you know? So again, it is possible, but I'm not gonna lie and say, you know, you can do everything else that you always wanted to do, you know, have your games console and all that kind of stuff and still go karting and go out every weekend. There are sacrifices that you'll have to make. And again, I just wanna show you that it's possible. I used to transport my car in the back of a Martin Ford Golf, right? And I used to have the car inside my own bedroom, right? Again, you have to clean it because you don't want fuel, it's, Terrific having the smell of fuel, but it ain't that bad because I like the smell of fuel, but not at like 2 a.m. in the morning when you're trying to get to sleep, right? And the third one is like accommodation. This is another thing. Um, if you're living close enough to the circuit, you can always come home, uh, but that kind of is a problem if you've got nowhere to leave your car at the circuit safely. So you sort of spend Saturday sort of trying to get your car back home, and then in the morning you're up at six getting it loaded. Um, Usually there's teams and places at the circuit where you can leave your car and it's relatively safe and you can sleep at the circuit. Um, a lot of places have places for tents. Uh, if you don't want to buy a tent, you just sleep in the car. It's as simple as that. I know plenty of guys that sleep in the vans and sleep in the car. It's just the way it is. Um, if you're used to kind of nice hotels and stuff and or nice, you know, situations where you sleep, if you want to go karting and you're on a low income, you sleep in the car. It's as simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything, all right? So that's what I've done. I mean, once upon a time when I was trying to qualify for the British Championship in 96 in cadets, uh, it was up at, yeah, up at Cumbria, at Rowra, and it was me, my brother, my dad and my cousin, we were sleeping in one van. Granted, it was a nice, relatively big van, and it wasn't a camper van, it was the van, just the van, and we all slept in there, and it was, we had this dodgy old TV, and it was, it was, it was, I, at some point in the night, I'm sure it was like raining inside the van, because it was just, the you know, the condensation and, and all that, but... Those are the things that you do when you really love it and you can do it on a low income. So if you've got the car and like you've spent 500 quid, I know a couple of people have said, oh, you spent 600 quid and all that, but there are reasons I'm on a deadline, right? I, need, I want to get the project done and as quickly as possible. You get a car for 500 quid. Um, you know, there's other things I'm going to do in another video uh, about sort of helmets and suits and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we spent 500 quid, hopefully, You've got somewhere to store the car. Worst case scenario, it's coming in to your bedroom sort of thing. So that's not going to cost anything. You may have a car, a little hatchback, if you're, if you're lucky enough. I mean, I think it's reasonable to say that even on a lower income, you can afford just about afford a car. Um, so, you know, that might not be extra money. So all it is is a roof rack. So you're spending oh, maybe 50 to 100 pound. You'll always get back because roof racks, you know, you buy and sell them easily, right? They're always popping up online. So you might be looking at transport and storage, hopefully only spending an extra 50 to 100 quid, the best case scenario, which I think is perfectly acceptable. Again, 
There is a secondary thing, like if you're storing it in your bedroom and you live maybe somewhere quite awkward, you won't have somewhere to work on it. Um, so that's an issue because you won't have an outside space to work on it. And um, I understand that, but I just want to give examples that I myself have been able to be fortunate enough to store it in a bedroom and take it in the back of a car, right? So it is possible. That's what I want to say, really. It's like it is possible to do it. So, yeah, uh, next video, hopefully I'll be going through some stuff with um, helmets and, and race suits and stuff. Personally, I'm a bit careful with, with crash helmets. The way I see it is you buy what you can afford. And if you can't afford it, you really should. Uh, I just don't think you should need to be cutting corners with crash helmets. Uh, it's, it's the number one thing where I go, look, spend as much money as you possibly can on a decent crash helmet. I mean, I've got to upgrade my helmet soon anyway. And uh, But racing suits and boots and that kind of stuff, we can do relatively cheaply. So thanks for watching. Make sure you check out, uh, I think it's Cart Pulse, uh, their Facebook page. They do have some great examples of people transporting carts in a load of weird, wonderful ways, you know, on the back of M3s, convertibles and kind of stuff like that where you go how how could they transport a cart with that and somehow people manage it so check out what they do i really think it's a good some good inspiration there especially with like trailers and kind of stuff like that if you want to go that route and also yeah down below links to the patreon the paypal all that kind of stuff so if you want to help us out a cart in one you know donations on there fantastic right i won't go on about it because it just you don't want to hear all that so yeah thanks for watching and yeah hopefully I'll get another episode up soon of the budget cart challenge and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.